what's up? I'm Code Phony. I'm not a genius. I don't even have a degree to my name. Um, I'm pretty mediocre at Leap Code, but I, you know, put in the work. I put in the practice, and I was able to crack big tech. Since January, I've applied to over 50 jobs. Uh, I've done over a dozen technical screens. I've done half a dozen final loop on-site interviews. Uh, each of those about five to six hours long. And I've come out the other side with three offers that are all in the six figure range. Um, am I flexing? Uh, yeah, a little bit I am. But I'm also here to say that you can do the exact same thing if you put in the effort. Uh, I do have some experience under my belt at this point. If you have no experience, uh, you might want to look at my some of my previous videos. This video can also help you as well, just to get a general trajectory for your career. Um, if you're a dev, if you're a developer with some experience and you feel like you're being underpaid, or if you just want to check the market out, I highly recommend that you check the, the rest of the video out. First of all, you're gonna have to really nail the marketing down, because you might not like hearing this, but LinkedIn is super important these days when it comes to actually getting recruiters reaching out to you. So for step one, clean up your LinkedIn, clean up your GitHub page, clean up your portfolio site, and also, of course, your resume. So once you have those things done, really dialed in, uh, have your page uh, marketed as a developer, uh, do not put the word junior in there at all anywhere. That will That's like repellent for recruiters. But yeah, so once you have this marketing down, you're going to have recruiters just as a steady influx coming into your DMs and um, you're just going to take your pick basically of wh whatever uh, jobs you want to interview for. I recommend honestly, if you don't have a, like a huge pipeline on the horizon, just take them all and use them as practice. When it comes to practicing for these interviews, nothing is better than the real thing because if you don't get to practice through real companies uh, doing actual interviews, I'm going to recommend that you do mock interviews anyway later down the down the line. So once you have your developer marketing down, uh, I really recommend that you just stay consistent about applying to maybe one or two jobs a day. Um, that could be uh, any of the companies that you're targeting, let's say like the big tech companies, there's Square, Uber, um, Microsoft, LinkedIn, all the, the big brand names. I highly recommend that you just apply to all of them. If you can uh, get a referral from Team Blind or just a friend or something, that, would, that might help a little bit. But I've, from what I've noticed, uh, if you have some developer experience under your belt, uh, there's about 10% chance that you'll get a callback just from code applying. So next up, I, I'm really gonna recommend that you practice leak code and system design. Um, to break this down a little bit further, uh, I highly recommend you use Algo Monster. Uh, I failed, so just as some context, last year, I in 20, uh, end of 2020, I applied to a bunch of jobs as well, and I really failed on all the interviews. I didn't. I only made it to one on-site final loop. Uh, on the, at the other companies, I failed at the phone screen stage, and that's because I was going about it the wrong way. I was just memorizing lead code problems. I wasn't really learning the underlying data structures that we needed to know to pass these interviews the right way. So with Algo Monster, it really helps you. Um, I, but I'm not. Uh, sponsored by the way by them I just bought them myself and I, I used I used the platform to learn all the underlying data structures so now whenever I look at a lead code problem I can see the pattern um, or the data structure that I need to use to, in order to solve the problem so that that helped me uh, improve my the time on my uh, lead code problem solving by a lot it's it's indescribable how valuable that resource was to me. So I highly recommend that. Also, um, if you want to pay for the code premium, uh, I did personally just for a few months. Um, it, it comes with a, de uh, with a really nice debugger and some ex some extra like curated list and things like that, but that's not really necessary. Um, I would just go through the team, um, through the Blind75 list. I'm gonna link these things below, but uh, yeah, Blind75 along with Algo Monster should really have you set uh, in terms of lead code. And then after you've completed those, you can just do leak code problems here and there. Um, as for system design, I really, really uh, recommend Pramp.com. Uh, on Pramp, you can do mock system designer interviews. And yeah, like Alex Shu's book series is really good too. There's some other good resources online. But whenever you do mock interviews, you're actually trying to do these system, system design 
uh, sessions with another person, uh, for example, on Pramp.com, it, it really helps set things straight in your head and like make the make you really remember the concepts that you're learning. And also another added benefit is you get to grow your network with people in these mock interviews. And um, a lot, a lot of times these mock interviews will be with people who are actually at these big tech companies already, and they really help you understand some of the knowledge that they've gained on the job as well. So like you're kind of getting a free education there in that sense. So really the most important thing here, the most important takeaway is just stay consistent with the lead code and the mock interviews. Um, the real interviews that you get from the recruiters and from the uh, callbacks from the applications can also stand in as interview practice. So for example, if I had a target of four mock interviews in a week and I had two technical screens in that week, then I would consider, consider those two technical screens as part of my mock interviews, uh, just with the added bonus that they could potentially end up uh, giving me offers and adding to my list of options later down the line. So how to schedule these interviews? Because it, that, I, to be honest, is a really daunting thing. Like if you're lucky, uh, I, like I was really lucky that in that I got um, my Amazon process kicked off first. I passed the, the objective assessment and once I passed that, I was able to kick that can down the road. Like I uh, scheduled my on-site like three months out. I was able to skip the phone screen because I had gotten to the on-site earlier um, in late 2020. So now I just skipped straight to on-site after I passed the objective assessment. And um, because I had that on-site scheduled down the road, I was able to coordinate my other like phone technical screens, my other on-sites kind of to coincide around the same time as that Amazon interview because I really wanted to have competing offers. Um, that way I can, I can have a little bit more leverage in the end for negotiations when it comes to compensation and things like that. Yeah, so my biggest tip here is just don't feel too anxious about pushing your technical screen out a month in, a, uh, a month in the future. Uh, or you're on site a couple months because you're, you're gonna need to pad some time here to practice so that that's why it really I don't really agree with a lot of people whenever they say that they need to practice first and then start scheduling interviews because you never know when a company's gonna call you back you never know um, when you're gonna be if you're gonna have any interview scheduled on the horizon so you might as well start practicing now and start trying to schedule interviews in the meantime. That way, whenever you have that first one booked out there, you're, you've already started, the, got, you've already gotten the ball rolling, and um, you can really, you're really more motivated to get more interviews as well. Because now that you have that one, it's in your best interest to schedule more and more. And also, with all these interviews on the horizon, you're, you have more motivation to actually practice every day as well. Because you have those goals coming up, like passing um, this technical screen, passing this technical screen. Um, you're moving on to on-site, so you're, it's, it's more front of mind than whenever you don't really have any interviews um, planned out. Yeah, so it might seem like a lot, it might be worth it to you, might not be. To me, it was totally worth it. The payoff was incredible. And all the things I learned along the way, all the people that I've met along the way, really made the whole process worth it for me. Also, I mean, I just accepted a new offer that's just like it blows my mind questions in the comments cool